Oliver. This is the main event boxing show, and this is our new feature. Every first Monday of the month, we talk to Irish boxing expert Leonard Gunning, who will keep us up to date with all things Irish. Hello, Leonard. Hi, how are you doing, Bag? It was okay to call you an expert, wasn't it? Well, uh, some days, not other days. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, the first thing, Leonard, obviously, like I say, this is a new feature. You're going to be here every month, giving us uh, all things Irish. You know, what, what have you got for us today, mate? Well, we're going to kick it all off with. Well, I made my appearance just uh, two weeks ago on your show for that Irish special, and things were looking really good for Irish boxing. I was very positive, but we've had a couple of kicks over the last two weeks, some real, real disappointments, uh, some expected, some less than expected. I suppose the first thing we start off with was the Willie Casey Guillermo Rigondo show over in uh, Dublin there two weeks ago. Casey wasn't expected to win, but he was expected to put up a really good show because he's, he's got a lot of fight and he's got a lot of heart. Unfortunately, he got caught with a body shot quite earlier on and uh, the shots that Guillermo Rigondo threw were like exocet missiles. Every one of them landed and detonated. And uh, as soon as uh, Willie Casey got caught, he was on the, he was backpedaling and he was down twice and it was over it was over before the end of the first round. So it was really disappointing. It was the first big show in Ireland, first probably big show in Ireland since Bernard Dunn got beaten in a similar fashion against Poonswata Karadingdang Gym in uh, the O2 arena. But the positive of that night was there was a really big crowd that uh, turned up. Yeah. It was it was on RTE, which is Ireland's version of BBC, and there was some cracking fights on the undercard. Joe Gallagher fighter Mark Heffron was on the undercard there. You know, he, from Oldham trains in uh, East Manchester, mm. he he had a, a very impressive um, a knockout win. As soon as he, he he felt his way out early on, and as soon as he put the the gas down, he just he blew your man away. So a great stoppage for him. It was a, a, a that, that grudge fight that I was telling you about between Ian Timms and Michael Sweeney. Well, for the Irish cruiserweight title, that was on the undercard. And that was a cracker. Uh, it was very split on people who people thought it won, but uh, Ian Timms, the Dubliner, took away the title, and uh, finally did. The main support to that was Anthony Fitzgerald, who fought Afif Belgesham. Belgesham, again, as we said last time, gave um, Andy Lee some real trouble in his fight, and he also gave Darren Barker a lot of trouble in the European title fight. Now, Fitzgerald stopped him in the fifth. Now, Belgesham just doesn't get stopped, never gets stopped. He's as tough as old boots. Yeah. He had a, he had a severe laceration across his snout, potentially caused by maybe not a shot, but maybe a shot in a, some disparity of opinion and that. He got stopped, Belgesham. Fitzgerald was throwing a lot of punches at him, a lot of leather. He had him up against the rope. He threw probably about 10 or 15 unanswered shots. Now, they weren't great shots or delivered with a lot of power and a lot of them missed the mm. target, but they were thrown nonetheless and there was nothing coming back from Elfie Belgesham. Yeah. So the referee jumped in. Belgesham reacted extremely angrily, punched the referee and went launched to get another assault at the referee before his, uh, his, his corner jumped in yeah. and stopped the fight and stopped him from getting at the referee. So it was a little bit of a disgraceful scene, then, which was a bit distasteful, but a, a really good win for Fitzgerald. The next disappointment then was uh, the fo following couple of days in Canada when um, Lucian Beauty put his IBF title on the line against yeah. Brian McGee. Yeah. Now, again, McGee wasn't ex expected to come away with a win here. However, he put up a real valiant effort. He was really in the fight and probably landed the only meaningful shots in the first few rounds. He struggled as the, as the fight went on. Uh, Beauty started to get, put his power and his size started to tell on McGee started getting through with a lot of good shots and he put him down with some lovely body shots and it was it was finished towards the end of the fight but McGee I think his stock probably went up in that fight even though it was a loss so we might see see him in a in another world title shot see how that one goes then the next kick was uh, this week with a, a really tasty looking show that was Graham Earls the former Amir Khan opponent yeah he uh, had his first foray into promotion in Northern Ireland because he's got a lot of Northern Irish guys signed. Now, he was topping the bill with Willie Limond, but he also had uh, one of his new stars, Joe Hillerby, and uh, another backup fight between Tommy Tolan and Phil Townley and a, a raft of other debutants as well including Montgomery and Ginley and Morris with a couple of days to go before the show and I was about to fly over for this show and lucky I hadn't booked my flight. Yeah, yeah. The fight was cancelled. Now, there was a lot of a lot of excuses given but the reality of it was there wasn't a great promotion put in place. 
Willie Lemons from Glasgow, he's not really going to sell a lot of tickets in Belfast and there's so many people looking to come over to Manchester and spend their money going to the McCluskey fight than go to a local show and they'd already committed to that. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of the real hardcore fans that would have gone to that show have probably already spent their allocation that their missus has given them that they can go and watch boxing on. <laughs> yeah. So, so, that, so that was disappointment. And then and the, the disappointment just kept coming. We had Martin Rogan. He's a real fan favourite of Martin Rogan. He's car- charismatic guy people really love him and have taken to him in Ireland yeah. and he was he was coming back after an op- an operation that potentially was going to end his career so he was coming back to prize fighter but unfortunately he's pulled back out of that because he said he hasn't got a he hasn't got enough preparation time to go in there and also he's fallen out with his manager and he split with his manager Brian Peters so he, we don't know what's really going to happen with him there and then finally late last night probably the biggest kick of all Matthew Macklin pulled out of the undercard for Paul McClellan he was supposed to fight Curry and Gavor in what would be the defining fight of his career yeah. and we're still yet to get a, a real handle of what's going on with that but contractual issues are being cited as the reason he's pulled out so we'll, we, we'll have to wait and see what unfolds there now he did have a relatively acrimonious split with the Hattons when he was signed with them there and they are corporate mothers so who knows what's going on there but they, they, they're all in, that's a lovely five minutes of negative stuff there <laughs> you know just unfortunately talking, just talking on the last one there you was on about Macklin no way um, it's, it's that's a big blow to the Cam McCloskey bill, which we're you know we're going to roll into now. But it's that's, a massive blow, yeah. Yeah, especially for a lot of the fans that were coming over because you know it was it was doubled up, wasn't it? You know you got two for the price of one, didn't you? With your ticket there, you know. You, de- you, know. you definitely did. You know, now fair enough. We, we will talk about it in a minute. There are other Irish fighters, but everyone's really wanting to see Macklin in this fight. And you know, Can is the real heavy favourite for this McCloskey fight. But everyone saw that Macklin gave or one as the 50-50 fight, the real fight that people wanted to get it get a look at and the dad and Corolla versus Reese and of course Reese has pulled out as well yeah so massive blows to that McCloskey bill real big blows and you know a lot of the tickets will be sold but in terms of its pay-per-view potential, I think that it could have a real, a real negative effect. Now, let's see between Hatton and Can if they're able to pull it out of the bag. Uh, but you know, with two weeks to go, they're, they're, they're going to have to really get a new going gonna, some. Yeah, yeah, yeah gonna it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, it's unfortunate, you know. Like you say, I, I hope, I hope as a boxing fan, they can get it sorted out because I'm hoping to go to that one myself. Especially in Manchester, it's going to be a massive night for Manchester. Amir Khan's coming back. You know, the last time we saw him here, it didn't go so well for him. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm sure that. That's probably going I mean, when he's in the dressing rooms in the MEN he'll be remembering that day of course he will, and, yeah. you know Paul McCluskey throws wide angular shots from awkward angles like Bredis Prescott now totally different style as Bredis Prescott but he, he is unpredictable he does throw a big shot so he let, he'll definitely have to watch out now McCluskey has employed for the first time in his career a strength and conditioner it's amazing to think this is the first time he's European champion he's undefeated and it's the first time he's ever had a strength and conditioner on board it just shows you how crazy boxing is but he's looking immense at the moment there was a video interview with him on Sky Sports and I, I tell you what he's looked he's looking in the best shape I've ever seen him and McCluffy never comes into the ring you'd never say he was in the kind of ripped shape that Amir Khan comes into the ring yeah. he always looks a little bit fleshy but I tell you what if he can if he can still keep that mobility and transfer a little bit of that extra power that he's gained from the strength and conditioner Amir Khan might not be in it for as easy a fight as a lot of people think because mm. McCluskey is going to have a massive following and at BoxingIreland.com we've teamed up with Team McCluskey just for helping them out with you know hotels over here and where they should be going just with our local knowledge of the Manchester area mm. And we know that there is a massive amount of people coming over from there. I'd say we're probably looking at 5,000 people coming from uh, Northern Ireland and another 1,000 or so Irish people from around England as well. Wow. So yeah. the atmosphere in the MEN on that night is going to be amazing. There is a small twinge of regret that maybe Macklin isn't going to be there. Now, there is still other Irish interest on the undercard. Andy Murray, Cavan's former EU lightweight champion who's, all, who's been chasing John Murray yeah. uh, for quite a long time. He's on the undercard and he's fighting low local fighter who's from Blackburn mm-hmm. uh, Desi Higginson so that should be a, a relatively easy fight for Murray if he's up on his game but it puts him on a big stage and it puts him in front of a lot of fans where a lot of fans can see what he does because he's kind of a low key fighter he's not as charismatic as you know your Martin Rogans mm. so he lets his boxing do the talking so let's see how, the, how that pans out and then we have the, the first fight in Europe of Jamie Kavanagh now Jamie Kavanagh is a special little prospect from Ireland he won a, a medal at the juniors in uh, Guadalajara the World Juniors there a couple
couple of years ago and Dean Byrne was at the wildcard gym with Freddie Roach at the time. Now Dean Byrne and Jamie Cavanagh are both crumbling gym members from when they were in their amateur days. Now Dean Byrne switched Freddie Roach on to this young fella that won a medal. They brought him over, had a look at him and he signed him up straight away along with Stephen Feather. Now he's had a number, he's also signed with a Golden Boy promotions now as well, so he's, he's been getting on some great cards over there. And but he hasn't had a he hasn't had his Irish debut or European debut. So this is as good as his Irish debut with all the Irish fans that's going to be in there. So a lot of people are really looking forward to seeing if Jamie Cavanagh can live up to the hype that people have been putting on him since he turned pro because he's a real hard worker. But a lot of people are talking a lot of good things about him as well. Cool, excellent. So there's still definitely a, a lot to look forward to in there with this bill. But just going back to where uh, you mentioning, you know, uh, McCloskey. Have you actually had any uh, contact with him in the last few days? You know, we yeah, got... we spoke to him two days ago, and he's so confident about the fight. What he's not doing is he's not focusing on all the talk about Amir Khan, yeah, and you know the Alex Ariza situation, and potentially he's not getting much sparring with uh, Manny Pacquiao. And there's rumours going around that he's fallen out with Pacquiao. Now he, he he's specifically ignoring all the Khan talk and just focusing on himself. And like I say, he's got this strength conditioner in, and I think that's done him the world of good. He looks as good as I've ever seen him. He sounds really confident and up for the fight. Because he's got so many so many people coming over to follow him as well, he's really up for it. He doesn't want to let them down. It's yeah. really rocky stuff, but, uh, you know, I think, he, listen, he's got, a, he's got a pretty good chance. He's 10 to 1 to knock Amir Khan out, and I think I might be having a little bit of a flutter at that. It's worth, it's worth that 10 or so, isn't it? But, um, yeah. just, just, just talking about McCloskey again, you know, um, what kind of fighter is McCloskey? You know, because obviously, you know, in Ireland, you know, a lot of people know about him, but in you know, in Manchester, he's not the biggest of names. No, so, he wouldn't be. No. So, how, how would you describe his fighting style? McCluskey was a, was a, a slow grower, shall we say. He fought on a lot of bills across across Ireland and on undercards in the UK as he came up through the ranks. Now, he fought as far as from Cork and Dublin, all small different places all over Ireland, and he didn't really come to the forefront until he fought uh, Colin Lyons for the European title. Now, there was a drop out there. I think it was Manchester. David Barnes was supposed to be fighting. Lions mm. and Barnes dropped out and McCluskey came in now McCluskey is he's a reflex fighter he hangs his, his hands very low but he's got a devastating punch and he's a southpaw as well so he's quite tricky and he, he uses a lot of shoulder movement and head movement a lot of people might liken it to sort of a, a Prince Nassim Hamid type of style yeah. where he keeps his hands low he fires his shots with ferocity and he moves, he moves to ca- try and get his fighter off balance. Now, whether he can use, when he's going to, when we spoke to him, I asked him if he was going to change that style in re- in recognition of Amir Khan's lightning reflexes, and he was a little bit unsure about that. And that's something that we really got to look forward to. Is Paul McCluskey going to change his style to adapt? to Amir Khan's undoubted lightning reflexes and speed. What he's, he's known for is his speed. Can he change midstream into a different style? Or is he tampering with a formula that's worked for him? It's something that he is struggling with himself. Yeah. And we, we'll only know on the night whether he changes his tactics from, yeah, so it, from it, every fight he's had previous to this fight. Yeah, I mean, it can, might, can be a dangerous thing. It's one of them sort of things that, you know, it, it can blow up in your face kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, and again, it can sometimes work for you as well. So uh, it'd be interesting to see that. You know, it's, it's uh, good to hear that. Do you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, we don't know what sort of fight we're going to get now. So, uh Adds, adds, a little, adds a little yeah. bit more to the excitement, do you know what I mean? It's a bit, it's a bit more spice. <laughs>